Well, good afternoon and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now today I thought we'd uh, have a look at Cymbidiums for a change. Uh, we'll have a, a little talk about what they require, the care and cultivation, and uh, we'll see how we go from there. But this are uh, seven Cymbidiums here, which have never flowered for me yet. Uh, they were all nearly dead a couple of years ago. But uh, I brought them back to uh, looking quite nice and growing quite well. So we'll just have a look at a few of these. Now this is one with five bulbs on it. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, this is a new growth, which is doing very, very nicely. That hasn't started uh, growing its uh, bulb yet on there. So uh, that's quite pleasing. I don't have any names for any of these, I'm afraid. So we'll just have to try and find uh, names for when they do bloom. And hopefully we'll have plenty of blooms on these cymbidiums next year. This is one with only two bulbs on it. And uh, it didn't look uh, very good. It was worse for wear. There was marks all over the leaves. I think that was... was leaving it out in the sun. Uh, it's got a big bulb here, they're all rock hard. But uh, the beauty about this one is uh, the new growth it has here. Very, very clean new growth. So that's lovely. Now these aren't generally kept in this greenhouse. I generally keep them in the cold greenhouse over there. But it's too cold to film in there, so I've just uh, brought them in here for today. Now this has much thinner leaves on it, so I think this is going to be one of the uh, smaller growing uh, cymbidiums. Uh, all the leaves look very good on this one, and uh, new growth here is looking very good. So uh, I look forward to that one, naming it, and uh, some of these small Cymbidiums, uh, they can have very beautiful, beautiful flowers on them. This is another one I'm very pleased of. It's got some massive bulbs on it here and two beautiful new growths that just form in the bulbs there, you can feel them. And another one at the back there. All absolutely spotless leaves on them, absolutely beautiful. So we can step back a bit and have a look. Yeah. That is looking really nice. Now I don't remember this one. It's one I've just stuck in the uh, in some medium there. There's no bulb on it, so I'm going to take that out and have a look what's going on below surface there. And this is one where I just stuck a bulb in, uh, a back bulb, and uh, it's just put up this new growth now in the last uh, 12 months, so... Uh, that looks like it's going to make a nice plant too. I mean, I never used to like these. I always thought they were cumbersome plants, but uh, I have uh, had a couple in flower this year, one of which I've taken over to my lady friends, and she's got it in her lounge now because it's so nice. But I've got another here in uh, flower, which I'll show you before long. But we'll just take that one out of its pot and have a look at it. Right, we'll just remove this one from its pot, as I said, and have a good look at it. And as I said before, I don't remember potting this up at all. And uh, it's potted far too deep. And it looks a real mess. Look at that. got just a three newish roots on it but I shall clean that up put it in a fresh pot and put it in some fresh bark and uh, we'll see how that one goes on well as you can see I've cleaned these up uh, the best that I can so and it just shows you how hardy these plants are you know any other plant this would have been dead months ago but they struggle to keep living, these uh, cymbidiums. So I'm just going to plant this up and uh, give it another go. Well, I'm just going to use some uh, 
a mixture of uh, large bark and medium bark and there's a few uh, grow stones thrown in so that should suffice for this one, it should do well on it. So I'm going to use a slightly smaller pot, I'll put the large uh, bark in there first because we don't really want to over pot them and this one I'm hoping I can just keep the uh, the bulb above ground. Just put the load in, give it a good tapping. Make it nice and firm. It's still below ground there. I think a little stake in that will be uh, will be needed, so I'll try and get one of those. One, two, three. Well, I've just put a stake in that one, as you can see. I've just fastened it round the bottom with a bit of aluminium wire. So uh, I'll give that a good watering now and uh, move on to the next one. Now this one is me largest plant I've got. It's got all those bulbs in there and it's ready for splitting but not until it's finished flowering and I'm rather proud of this one. It's got some beautiful blooms on it. Here we come. Absolutely lovely. I showed a small picture of this on the uh, on YouTube earlier and I got some uh, some names given to me what, what it probably is or what it's from so I've sort of uh, put both of the names together and come up with the idea that this is a, a cross between Symbidium Ming Emperor and Mini King Arthur now I know lots of you will be disagreeing with me on that so uh, you can let me know what you think it might be in the uh, in the comments please now what do we know about cymbidiums well cymbidiums are often used as cut flowers in displays and uh, they're used in corsages in, in weddings uh, they nearly all have a pattern lip and uh, the blooms can last for uh, well anything up to a couple of months. Uh, and what else can I say about them? Yeah, they come in a variety of colours, but uh, you never get them blue. They are generally large growing plants, but some rather delicate ones can be found in Southeast Asia. You know. Uh, Japan, China, sometimes in Australia and these can be either terrestrial or epiphytic but uh, they're more difficult to cultivate and uh, growing one as an epiphytic I think that could be a real challenge. Well on the whole from what I've read these require a winter temperature of 10 uh, centigrade going up to 15 centigrade which is 50 Fahrenheit up to 59 Fahrenheit but I keep these almost down to freezing and uh, I think we're keeping them down to freezing it gives them that little boost when they come to uh, come to spiking I don't know why but it seems to do that uh, in summer uh, you can, well, you always will put these outside. Uh, don't give them any summer sun because you'll get all the leaves all marked that you can see on these that these have because I left these out in full sun last year which I shouldn't have done. Uh, and if you do keep them outside, keep them well covered, keep them in shade and keep them well covered because uh, if we get the torrential rains, which you sometimes get in summer here, 
it might start rotting the new growth. So uh, keep them well in the shade and out of the sun. Now, cymbidiums don't like to dry out completely, so we've got to try and keep them moist. So, uh, as I said when I was repotting the last one, it's got to be quite open, the mix, uh, but it's a mix that will keep uh, moist, but never soggy. Uh, when you water them, you, once, once a week should be okay, but in warm weather, you will probably need to uh, water them more often. And uh, cymbidiums, they say, are heavy feeders, but I've found that they respond very well to a light feed every couple of weeks. Uh, I like to give them my nitrogen during the growing season and a high phosphorus feed uh, when they're just starting to spike. And I also like, like I do with all my other orchids, like to give them a flush with Epsom salts every so often. Uh, you know, to try and eliminate the amount of salts that are uh, being deposited in the uh, medium. I'm also trying a couple of plants on uh, fish blood and bone to give them twice during the growing season. And uh, I suppose any other slow release fertilizer will work just as well. That's if it does work. Well, I can't say much more about this plant, only it's one that I'm rather, rather pleased with. And uh, we'll just have a look at the bottom again. Some nice new growths, a lot of dead bulbs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or something like that. Uh, a lot of them that's going over. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of bad wood on them. And... Uh, this is what you get if you keep them outside a long time in the sun. So I think I've told you all I know about Symbidium, so uh, what can I say only? Thank you very much for watching and uh, thank you to all my subscribers. I've passed 5,000 now, so I'm on my way up to 10,000, which I don't expect will ever happen, but you never know. I might have a quick rush on the uh, on the subscribers. That would be very nice. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye.